In this segment, we're going to talk about T5, which is another sequence-to-sequence -sequence pre training scheme similar to BART. Uh, in fact, they were developed basically at the same time where T5 was developed at Google and BART was developed at Meta or at the time Facebook. And T5's pre-training objective is very, very similar to BART's. It doesn't have as many of the bells and whistles, but it has the kind of important component, which is that we take a original text, we mask out pieces of it, we have that as our input, and then we feed that into a transformer and in a seek-to-seek -seek fashion, attempt to predict the targets here. Now, one key difference from BART is that unlike in BART where we predict the entire original text as the output, here we only predict these masked sequences. So it, it's a slightly different shape for the output and it leads to T5 being slightly better than BART at some tasks and slightly worse at others. BART, for example, was used a lot more for summarization, partially because it's possible that the pre-training on to produce entire grammatical outputs uh, was a little bit more compatible with fine-tuning on summarization. But largely, these models do the same thing, and T5 was also shown to work well at a lot of tasks where sequence-to-sequence -sequence models were standard. Uh, in particular, English to German, English to French, and English to Romanian translation numbers here were given, and this was one of the first uh, uses of big pre-trained models in machine translation. Now, one of the other things that the T5 paper started looking at, which has since become a very important aspect in all of pre-training, is the data that gets used. So they tried to collect the basically biggest data set they could, called the Colossal Cleaned Common Crawl, or C4, and they looked at how much actually having all of this data was important for pre-training. So across these different rows of the table, they look at basically make, taking smaller amounts of the data, but then copying and pasting it. So you end up with the same total size of data set. So you'll train for the same amount of time, but it's just repeated more. And we see that actually having more unique data here does lead to improvement. And it doesn't really seem like we've necessarily hit the limit of that yet. Uh, which is going to come up later when we talk about the bigger, more modern pre-trained models. The other thing that T5 introduced was a big focus on actually multitasking between the fine-tuning tasks themselves. Part of the idea was that we would learn one model that would not just be pre-trained on this data, but would also be fine-tuned on a bunch of data sets and be, be able to do different things as a result. So this wasn't really delivered on uh, fully in the T5 paper, but there's a nice example of it uh, from a year later from Kashabi et al., uh, a system called Unified QA, where they took a big set of QA problems and tackled them all with a single T5 model that was fine-tuned on a bunch of existing data sets. So for example, the squad question answering data set has these inputs that look like these paragraphs, and then the outputs are selections from that paragraph. But we could just call that a seek-to-seek -seek problem, right? We could just take this input and then say, hey, the model needs to generate this output. We can do the same with question-answer data sets where the output does not appear in the input. We tell the model, you need to generate a new string as output, but that's fine. Uh, it's kind of within the capabilities of the model. Whether it'll work well or not is another question. Uh, so the model can be fine-tuned over this type of data set and what we saw previously kind of at the same time. And in fact, uh, they unified it with a couple other for, uh, formats as well, like multiple choice question answering, where you're given a set of options and you need to return one of those options, and Boolean yes-no question answering. So they took a model and trained it over all of these data sets at once, and this big T5 model ended up doing quite well at all of them. So I'm not going to walk through the results of this specifically, but it shows the idea and the flexibility of these kinds of pre-trained sequence-to-sequence models. You can take them and throw them at a lot of tasks and start to build these kind of generalist models, which started to pave the way for the capabilities of things like ChatGPT. That's the end of this segment.